Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We're at Willinghurst Fishery here in Surrey. Now, we're going to try and give you a few tips on fishing in the margins. It can be really exciting fishing. You don't need to be distance casting and you can use just ordinary, regular light, even rods if you want, that type of thing that we use. You don't need big ones. And we're going to be using ground bait to get the fish going. Yeah, we're going to be using the same ground bait. So we'll both be a, it'll be a fair match with the same ground bait. Um, however, our hook baits are going to be slightly different. I'm going to be using meat, so I've got a bit of luncheon meat and some hot dogs. Good and old you, dog. you are going to be using <laughs> snails. I'm going to be using snails. <laughs> I've never used this stuff before. We're not plugging the product. In fact, I'll turn it around so you can't see the product. But it says it says it's hemp seed plus snails. I've mm. never used them before. Nice. Snails. We're going to give it a go. We're fishing. Well. Swims either side of this big big tree here. Yeah, so 10 metres from each other, really. Exactly, about like two standard yeah. standard swims. It's a regular day to get fishery. It's all it is. Not all private and safe for us. We just turned up and told them last night, can we come and have a film here? That's what we're going to do. We've found some fish bubbling. So, although Bailey, if we haven't seen him yet, to tell us exactly where to fish, we're going to take our hunch, our totally awesome hunch, and stick in this corner because the ripples are coming down this way, aren't they? Yeah, and the wind's what? got blowing into our Plenty our of action. Plenty and of action. we've seen lots of activity. We've been, seen fish coming out, fish rising, and uh, bubbles on the top as well. So we, using a bit of watercraft, hopefully, we found the we found the fish at this end of the lake. And with a bit of luck, we'll get onto some. First things, we're going to tackle up, obviously, but even before that, my suggestion, margin fishing, get some bait in the water. Mike's going to mix up the ground bait for us. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we've got a bucket here and all we've got is Bailey's number one ground bait, which we use for ground bait, it's basically horse feed, called Bailey's number one. And we're just going to put, for the sake of this video, I'll just do a couple of handfuls of this, double handfuls in the bucket. I'm also going to add to that some Screttings pellets. These are two mil and four mil horse feed pellets. Um, these are brilliant, these, they get the carp munching and it doesn't actually fill them up too much, so they will go for your hook bait. So I've got a load of these, which I'll chuck in here like this, about that much for the moment. Mix that all together, as well as that, got some corn. Can't go wrong with a bit of old cheap sweet corn from the supermarket, a couple of handfuls of that. It's part of the fun in fishing, is just making a concoction of bait. We don't really know whether it works, but we know this has worked because we've done it before. So mix that all together like that. Now obviously I can't throw that out as it is like that because a lot of it is still in a powder form, which means it's just going to go everywhere and it's not going to feed accurately. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of water, but you don't want to soak it, you just want to dampen it so that you can ball it up. You don't want to get it too wet. Okay, well I've just added water and I've actually, as you can see from the texture here, I've added too much water now uh, because it's not, it's not actually holding together. I can feel it's definitely too wet. So what I'll do is just add a couple more handfuls of the horse feed just a dry mix just to get it a bit drier and what you have to be careful of is again put too much dry ground bait in there because what's going to happen is as leave it for five minutes because that's going to absorb all that water in and you need to actually leave it for five minutes just to see what the texture will go like so that probably needs a little bit more i'd say it's still a bit too wet so i added a tiny bit more just a handful and then I'll probably leave it for five minutes and see what the consistency is like then. Always keep a bit of ground bait back. You don't want to be doing it all at once. So keep some back just because then you can make a fresh, a fresh bit of ground bait for later on. Because as, as the sun comes out, as the weather warms, then your, dry, your ground bait's going to dry out more. So be aware of that. Right. Tip is wet your hands a bit first, just so it doesn't stick to your hands. Right, you can see now that's balling up nicely. And all I'm doing is I'm fishing about 15 yards out, just where I've seen some bubbles. And you want to keep, you don't want to leave it too long before you throw it in, because I can see now I've got some ripples over there, and I know exactly where my bait's going in. If you leave it too long, then those ripples will go, and you'll think, where on earth did I throw my bait? So you need to almost, you could probably ball up a few bits of ground bait ready, just so you can see exactly where you're feeding. It's a good job I'm a PE teacher. I've got a good arm teaching all those cricket, all those kids cricket. Speaking of cricket, I wonder how the Aussies are feeling at the moment after that sorrowful defeat on the Ashes. Not thinking of a holiday to Australia anytime soon then. No. <laughs> a little bit of pommy bash in there. <laughs> no, we love the Aussies really. Actually, the Australians are our fourth biggest following. Yeah, on, the, on, YouTube, on YouTube they are fishermen. So we do like the Aussies. 
I'm now going to do from my other rod just down in the margins uh, real close to the trees probably a f one foot two feet out from the trees a couple of rod lengths out get them feeding on that the good thing about this ground bait is that it's cheap so you don't actually mind throwing quite a bit of it out because there's nothing worse than having expensive ground bait throwing it all out there and then blanking for the day at least with this I've not spent too much money in fact I spent none because dad's bought it all I'm going to be using a straight running link ledger here just a standoff link ledger with a single swan shot and it's stopped there by a swivel as you can see about 10 inches all main line straight away through no hook links to about a size 6 barbless hook there and I'm going to be using it for my bobbin good old trusty piece of plastic notebook there Mike's all modern school he's got buzzers with bobbins I'm going old school visual only we'll see how we get on and for this I'm using it's disgusting never used them before hemp this is hemp seed which you can see and these lovely things that's wonderful snail now I've caught on prawns really good carp bait especially for margin fishing will anything eat this will a carp take this we will find out I'm going to fish in one rod about like Mike about 15 yards out the other one close in on a bush the other side of Mike let's get baited up get it out see what comes Well, we've been getting little twitchy bites on the, on the snail and I think maybe I shouldn't be using it whole. I've never used it before so I don't know. So what I've done is got a pair of scissors and cut it down, just trimmed a little edge off it because basically look, it's just a piece of meat. Now, years ago we used to use slugs, split them, put a hook through them and use them in the rivers for chub. So I can see the logic in it and I've got here a bream. Let's get the chap in the, in the net and show him to you. That's just not a bad one. Not a bad old bream. Now then, have a quick look at him. I'll tell you what, the hook's gone through the net. If you ever find that's really annoying, it goes through the fish, out the other side, then snags in the net. But obviously with barbless, it's easy. Get it out the net, pull it through, unhook it. You don't really lose a lot of fish with barbless hooks if you provide you just keep tight to the fish. There we go. Nearly got the slime all over the new jumper. There is a nice bream, Willinghurst bream. He fell to a piece of snail. Let's get him back. Jumbo, the baby over there. Look at this! I'm getting, oh, he's going to spool me. I can't You're going to get spooled. That's 40, 50 yards out. Watch Don't out, he's going done. to the island. I, don't, I, can't, I didn't even want to get up. I just want to. <laughs> what a take! Knife. No, it's going to do me this fish. What a take! <laughs> I'm nearly out of line. Nearly out Look of line. Oh, no, 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 no. What's your rod's low? He's, he's going straight for the snag. Uh, no, this, is, this is a monstrous fish. Look at the bend in the rod. I'm just trying to, I don't even want to stand you up just want to maintain that pressure. Turn his head somehow. Here come the Spitfires. Yeah, apologies for the noise. No, do you know what this is, guys? What? This is a commemoration of the Battle of Britain. And I think there's 30 Hurricanes and Spitfires. Look at this guy. And they're sending, there they are. Where? All over there, the Hurricanes and oh, Spitfires. Yeah. From the Second World War, it's the last batch. Hang on a minute, I've got to get tight to this fish, but I love Spitfires. There's nothing more English than a brown trout 
flying a Spitfire. Oh, that's English, isn't it? That is English. A brown trout flying a Spitfire. Yeah, they're up there. I mean, what boy doesn't want to get out there and machine gun something? Do you what, I'd like to machine gun this fish because I'm making. Oh, oh he's come off. He's come off. Do you know sometimes you get fish like that <clears throat> and you come back with a scale on the hook and you think that's why I couldn't stop it. But it was a ripper of a take. I blame those Spitfires myself. <laughs> I bet I've just got a hook. Hook? There. I reckon the way that went, that was a big 20. Bailiff just said. Biggest is 38, wasn't it? 37. 37, yeah. I hate to think I've got that on an Avon rod. But that probably was foul hooked or something because that was a no turn the wheel job. <laughs> well, what I've done is because the second lake here backs onto that one, when I did that basin up, I just put a ball of ground bait in one, two, three swims where nobody's fishing because carp often get used to people about three or four o'clock in the afternoon banging out their bait tins literally two feet out. You just lean out, dump their leftover bait there. Those carp know that, especially in the commercial waters like this, and that's something in your favour, because if you know it as well, you can often pick off the extra fish like that. Now, got a bit quiet over there after I had that bream of the roach, so I've come over here just checking the swims. I've done it about three times. I wind in the baits, clip them up, come around, have a look, go back out, cast again. I've actually seen one about three or four pounds, so close I could almost touch it. Whether I can catch a few guys, I don't know. It's worth a shot, but he's very, very close to the bank, so he will spook easily. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this single swan shot off. Keep it in my pocket. So that way I forget about it. It goes into the washing machine when the wife puts it in there. She doesn't check the pockets. It ruins the washing machine. I pay £300 for a new washing machine because I put that in my pocket. Try to remem remember to remind me. Graham, don't leave lead shot in your pocket. Let's kneel, kneel down here so we can see him. Guys, he's right on the bait. Right down there. Very, very spooky. Well, guys, we've got another fish. This time I cut the snail even smaller, and I think maybe I should even drop the hook size. It's another bream, not quite as big as the other one. But listen, they all count. A fish is a fish. There he goes. Look, it's not going to set the world alight. It's not a very big one. It falls out, but that is still a fish worth catching. Snails work. Oh no! What, a hook pull? Oh man, that was bad luck. That's too big fish, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't go to snag or anything? No, he's pulled. Gone. Well, I just lost that fish earlier, unfortunately. I didn't get to see it, which I hate when fishing, when you don't see the fish at all. Really frustrating. It was definitely a carp, um, and it was probably quite a big fish because it, I couldn't really wind the, the, the reel on it at all. It just kept going towards the reeds to my right. Um, I have changed tactics, I need to confess. I had bream pestering me on the meat and I didn't want to catch the bream to be honest at the moment so I wanted to catch uh, target the carp so what I've done is I've gone for a pink pop-up um, and just a PVA bag of scratting pellets four mil and two mil pellets in that um, and that's what actually I had that that fish on about uh, 20 minutes ago I lost that fish and it looks like that might be into a fish over there <laughs> is he in no, his makeshift bobbins have fallen off. There he comes. <laughs> and our survey says... <laughs> yeah. Two bites on two rods, I missed both of them, we're only literally paces away. <laughs>
well, I seem to have got the handle on the, uh, on the bream now. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to throw some bait in another lake behind. We'll go and use these sections of uh, snail and see if we can't pick a fish or two up in that other lake as well. Have seen a movie, man. I'll keep going and have a look. Again, only a small fish, but we're gradually plodding along. And I'm not putting too much bait in now. All I do is loose feed a bit of corn over the top and a bit of that hemp, loose feed, catapult the hemp out. And when you're ground baiting, make sure that you don't throw the ground bait out so far that you can't reach it with a loose feed in a catapult. Big problem, I do it all the time. Guys, I've, uh, I've got my last bream I think I'm going to catch and I'm going to try this other lake. Very hard to leave feeding fish if you keep getting the bobbins going up. <laughs> it's difficult. But I'll get this one, say a small bream again. And there we go. There we go. Yet another one. I think we've proved that those uh, hemp seed, ground bait, snails, they do work. Let's go over the other lake and just see if we can't get a carp. Mike's going to stay there and hold out for a bigger carp if he can. But we've lost two big fish today, really good ones. Just the hook's pulling, it's just bad luck. Well guys, I just struck, after watching a little tweaky bite close in where I thought the carp were, and I struck and this huge crayfish went flying through the air, which is basically the best place for them. Look at the size of this thing. You would not want to be attacked. Look at him trying to, look, look, he's trying to poke us with it, look. Yeah. What a disgusting creature. That is horrible. And yeah. they are absolutely everywhere in the southern British waters. You know, he's trying to get a cigarette in now. Oh yeah, apparently uh, the bailiff said these are black when they're in still waters. Not so good to eat. Better to eat when they're in a river, obviously a fresher. Oh, what, did he fly through the air when you hit Yeah, I just struck and he was, and he was flying through the air. I've got the drag on too, I had the drag too tight with that Well, last. you can do it backwind as well. What sort of a take? Ripper. <laughs> a bit like the other one that I lost. But he's, oh, it's a very kind of inclined swim, fight. this. There's snags to my left, snags to my right. It'd be nice to just see the fish this time before he pings. That's a nice fish, I'd say. It's a big boil. I'd say it's quite a decent fish. Definitely a carp, anyway. Be some bream otherwise, wouldn't it? Be some bream. I think. No, it's a common. That's all right. It's not a huge one, but it would. No, sir. It's a fish for me. Fish for me. I've got a line in the water that I want to keep. I'll go this too. side. I've got a line in the water that I want to keep. Okay. No, it's not ready yet. Still digging. Just watch those branches on the left. If you get to they'll be trailing in the water. Come on. He's, he's found the energy now. Even rods though, that's the difference, yeah. isn't it? You, you're lighter, much, much lighter than the carp rod. Pound the quarter test curve rod and you get an amazing scrap out of, you know, relatively basic sort fish. smaller carp, yeah, and you, you get a decent fight. And then when you do hook a big one like you did earlier, it's pulled it you. steam trains off. Oh, he's alright, he's alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. the day for me. And you can even see a bit of sweet corn there from our ground bait. Yeah, it shows you, you see that. Your head down on it, yeah. Yeah, let's um, unhook him. There's the pink pop up, but we'll get him unhooked because commons tend to go nuts. That's this one, right? Yeah, we'll unhook That's him. That's eight pounds, I'd say that one's a nice fish. Well, there we go. It paid off waiting here in the swim for the carp. I've, I've lost one, or oh, I think I've lost two. Um, finally got one. Tail fin's a bit damaged on this one. But um, put up a good scrap right near, right near the net, and uh, hopefully it's getting towards that afternoon, that witching hour, where they might uh, hopefully come on the bite. Let's get this one back. Well, I'm now fighting Bream from the seated position. 
think he's crossed my other line. I've now moved one out and one in. And that one's going to go over there. Yep, yeah, another bream, a couple of pounds. Hit, 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 grab your rod! Mike's on there. Jesus. <laughs> Nothing. Keep tight to it. Walk backwards if you have to. Fish on or not? Yeah. Don't watch Mike fish, watch my fish. It'd be much bigger than his, look. Let's get this back, because that was an absolute screamer. Man, we're on fire now with our bait. Oh, we're turning to a carpy now. Well, when you've lost the TV fish, you think... Watch that tip down, bait, because that's a 50-year-old rod. I've had that one time. And what was that on? That was on the pop-up again, in a margin rod, on a PVA bag in the margins. I've seen a few a bit of activity. I want to get my other PVA bag out there, but no rod out there at the moment. And I want to get it out there. Good scrappers. Yeah, it's fish shine. Get it. Yeah. Well, there we go. It's a small one, but it's certainly scrapped well for its size. And it's in a nice looking condition one, this one. Nice tail to it. Really, really good scrap. And on the pink pop-up, with just a little uh, BB shot, just to weight it a bit better, just so it sits right. I was checking the water in the margins when I put the pop-up in the margins, just to check it's sitting right. But we got them on that ground bait feeding initially, yeah. wasn't it? That's what's bored them in, because we've seen them coughing, yeah, like, coughing it, up sweet corn. And the, the, the bags of the, of the scratting pellets does the job, really. It gets them absolutely munching. Targeted. And then they slip up on the old pink pop-up. And there we go, guys. We're starting to come through again now. Little pieces, tiny little pieces. They would probably take tiny pieces of luncheon meat. In fact, I might try some of Mike's luncheon meat in a minute just to see if they take that as well as they take that uh, snippets of snail. And this one, again, not a monster, but listen, it's still a fish. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end.